Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Steve Lund and today we are going to talk about a new paper written by David Sinclair and his team that they have been working for many years about the information theory of aging. Do it. So the uh, study itself is called Loss of Epigenetic Information as a Cause of Mammalian Aging and uh, yeah, published January 12th. Here are some of the highlights of the study. Cellular responses to double-stranded DNA breaks erode the epigenetic landscape. So that's kind of, you know, the scratches on the um, CD or or a vinyl that over time accumulates that causes you know aging and the damage. This loss of epigenetic information accelerates the hallmarks of aging. So there are up to like 10 hallmarks of aging, like uh, loss of prostheses, telomere shortening, DNA damage, and uh, those kind of things, epigenetic um, miscommunication. These changes are reversible by epigenetic reprogramming. And uh, by this, they refer to like activating different like genes and pathways in the body like sirtuins and uh, using like these Yamanaka factors that you can turn on by manipulating the epigenome aging can be driven forward and backward. Nice. We're actually going to read uh, most of the article by Time magazine. It's been 13 years in the making so that's how long they have been working on this. In a study published January 12th Sinclair a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School describes a groundbreaking aging clock that can speed up or reverse the aging of cells. Scientists studying aging have debated what drives the process of senescence in cells and primarily focused on mutations in DNA that can over time mess up a cell's normal operations and trigger the process of cell death. But that theory wasn't supported by the fact that older people's cells often weren't riddled with mutations and that animals or people harboring a higher burden of mutated cells don't seem to age prematurely. Sinclair therefore focused on another part of the genome called the epigenome. So this is epigenetics. This is like the you know, environmental factors that control your genetics and genome. Since all cells have the same DNA blueprint, the epigenome is what makes skin cells turn into skin cells and brain cells into brain cells. It does this by providing different instructions to different cells for which genes to turn on and which to keep silent. So basically, like with aging, you see that uh, your uh, good genes kind of turn off, your antioxidant and anti-inflammatory genes and longevity genes turn off, and you turn on like these um, cancer genes and heart disease genes, which is also one of the hallmarks of uh, aging. In the cell paper, Sinclair and his team report that not only can they age mice on and accelerate the timeline, but they can also reverse the effects of that aging and restore some of the biological signs of youthfulness to the animals. That reversibility makes a strong case for the fact that the main drivers of aging aren't mutations to the DNA, but miscues in the epigenetic instructions that somehow go awry. Sinclair has long proposed that aging is the result of losing critical instructions that cells need to continue functioning in what he calls the information theory of aging. In the mice, he and his team developed a way to reboot cells to restart the backup copy of epigenetic instructions, essentially erasing the corrupted signals that put the cells on the path toward aging. They mimicked the effects of aging on the epigenome by introducing breaks in the DNA of young mice. Outside of the lab, epigenetic changes can be driven by a number of things, including smoking, exposure to pollution and chemicals. Once aged in this way, within a matter of weeks, Sinclair saw that the mice began to show signs of older age, including grey fur, lower body weight despite unaltered diet, reduced activity and increased frailty. The rebooting came in the form of a gene therapy involving three genes that instruct cells to reprogram themselves. In the case of the mice, the instructions guided the cells to restart the epigenetic changes that defined their identity as, for example, kidney and skin cells two cell types that are prone to the effects of aging. These genes came from the suit of so-called Yamanaka stem cells factors, a set of four genes that Nobel scientist Shinya Yamanaka in 2006 discovered can turn back the clock on adult cells to their embryonic stem cell state so they can start their development or differentiation process all over again. So obviously stem cells are, yeah, for been around for many years and they are considered many in many ways like this you know, miracle drug or not a drug, but a miracle therapy of uh, being able to pretty much rejuvenate your body. Double dose in the hip. The problem with, yeah, like too much stem cells is also like, you know, if you deplete your stem cells, then you're kind of, you know, <laughs> left in a worrisome uh, spot. So, but yeah, like Sinclair claims that there is at least like one backup copy in the epigenome that you can draw upon by activating these Yamanaka factors that kind of, you know, um, pretty much proliferate or reproliferate the cells into their youthful state with uh, stem cells, uh, basically. Sinclair didn't want to completely erase the cell's epigenetic history just to reboot it enough to reset the epigenetic instructions. 
using three of the four factors turned back the clock about 57%, enough to make the mice youthful again. We're not making stem cells, but turning back the clock so they can regain their identity, says Sinclair. I've been really surprised by how universally it works. We haven't found a cell type yet that we can't age forward and backward. Rejuvenating cells in mice is one thing, but will the process work in humans? That's Sinclair's next step. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be like the first person to like sign up for that, obviously for... You know, we don't know if it actually works, but uh, yeah, non-primates, non-human primates, uh, they're going to start using it on like monkeys eventually probably. Uh, the researchers are attaching a biological switch that would allow them to turn the clock on and off by tying the activation of the repro reprogramming genes to an antibiotic, doxycycline. Giving the animals doxycycline would start reversing the clock and stopping the drug would halt the process. Sinclair is currently lab testing the system with human neurons, skin and fibroblast cells, which contribute to connective tissue. Uh, so we are interesting to see what happens there. In 2020, Sinclair reported that in mice, the process restored vision in older animals. The current results show that the system can apply to not just one tissue or organ, but the entire animal. He anticipates eye disease as will be the first condition used to test this aging reversal in people, since the gene therapy can be injected directly into the eye area. And this is the study, actually, the uh, 2020 study that they have used pretty much uh, the reprogramming uh, let's say process in mice to uh, reverse their uh, vision, the blind mice. And these are the uh, Yamanaka factors, the OKT4, SOX2, KLF4 uh, genes. Uh, so yeah, these are just very, uh, let's say, more, uh, more accurate terminology for the Yamanaka factors. There was actually another paper by this uh, biotech startup that is about like this um, age reversal technologies. And they actually also used pretty much the same Yamanaka factors to reprogram the epigenome to make the mice live longer. So this study was uh, published January 5th, 2023, that uh, yeah, gene therapy mediated partial reprogramming extend lifespan reverses age area changes in aged uh, mice. And the company is called Rejuvenate Bio. Uh, their team uh, doesn't include David Sinclair. <laughs> I, I checked, uh, at least the pay web page doesn't say that, it, that David Sinclair is like a scientific advisor or anything like that. Uh, but that, but his uh, study here is under the list of their scientific publications. Um, so uh, yeah, like maybe they uh, this in this study they used uh, the kind of I don't know technology or uh, they, this company helped to conduct this study. Just you know, just to uh, give some more context that there are actually already some uh, you know startups doing this and applying some of these uh, you know theories on mice at least right now. And uh, you know, David Sinclair. Uh, he's an, apparently not involved with this company, at least not to my knowledge, but uh, he might, you know, contribute in some way. So who knows? So back to the article, this study is just the first step in redefining what it means to age, and Sinclair is the first to acknowledge that it raises more questions than answers. We don't understand how rejuvenation really works, but we know it works, <laughs> he says. We can use it to rejuvenate parts of the body and hopefully make medicines that will be revolutionary. And now, when I see an older person, I don't look at them as old, I just look at them as someone whose system needs to be rebooted. It's no longer a question of if rejuvenate, rejuvenation is possible, but a question of when. <laughs> so yeah, like very, obviously, very optimistic and, uh, you know, this kind of visionary uh, person and visionary, like, article and a study as well in many ways. But there's also, like, many critics and uh, skeptics about uh, the Sinclair's claims and uh, the biggest one of them is probably jo Charles uh, Brenner uh, who yeah has actually also <laughs> published a paper a very short like a review uh, in January 2023 again in the same month a science-based review of the world's best-selling book on aging so he talks about Sinclair's uh, book lifespan and uh, yeah pretty much he says that it's kind of uh, full of a lot of uh, misleading uh, claims and uh, it's just very bullshit and i do believe that uh, that's quite you know accurate in a lot of ways as uh, sinclair has hyped up a lot of the things that turned out to be not true like a resveratrol and sirtuins uh, don't actually have like any any like meaningful role in longevity at least to our knowledge right now they have been kind of debunked in terms of having any actual longevity benefits and uh, you know nmn uh, i do be think that nmn has a lot of health benefits in terms of maintaining insensitivity and maintaining uh, like you know, vitality and energy levels and other related things obviously you don't want to have low energy levels you know, but uh, like nmn alone isn't gonna be this uh, magic drug that's gonna reverse aging nmn can help in a lot of ways with energy levels and kind of getting out of a slump but uh, you need obviously the other factors in terms of maintaining longevity so in conclusion the uh, new paper by david sinclair 
at least it gets many people like excited or woken up <laughs> to the idea that uh, it is possible to like reverse some aspects of aging in a lot of ways, at least in like mice. And um, I do think that, um, you know, in the next few years, there's going to be probably some more breakthroughs of it. I don't think it's going to be that, you know, you completely reset the system that you become like a juvenile uh, as a mouse. Like if you're old and then you reset the system, you go back into like a juvenile mice. I don't think that's possible. But uh, yeah, you could probably like stave off some of these age related conditions like, you know, like joint pain and uh, arthritis and Alzheimer's and heart disease and uh, diabetes and all the things that could come with uh, age. If you are interested in reversing your biological age, then I am looking for a few more people who want to do that. If you're interested, then email me the word health at info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.